I appreciate everyone everyone joining us here this evening. My name is Zach Dahl. I am Deputy Director with the City of San Mateo's Community Development Department and, and Project Lead for our General Plan Update. Um, I'm joined by our consultant team um, with PlaceWorks, um, led by Joanna Jansen, who will be leading the presentation this evening. Um, so before we get started, um, just wanted to let you know we, um, our city staff and our consultant team is here to take notes and, and collect the input that um, you're providing here this evening. And then also at the end of our workshop, we are going to hold a virtual raffle. We have um, six Starbucks gift cards. So um, please stick around. And um, if you are a winner, make sure you um, get us an email address so we can get that, um, that gift card over to you. So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Joanna and, and we can talk about the general plan update and our goals, policies, and actions. Great. Thank you so much, Zach. As Zach said, my name is Joanna Jansen and I'm a principal with PlaceWorks. We're the consultant team supporting the city with the general plan update. Uh, and I want to just start off by going over a quick agenda for our evening together tonight. Thank you so much for being here and spending your um, very precious time with us. We really appreciate it. Um, and in just a few minutes, we're going to start off with an icebreaker exercise to learn a little bit more about you and um, who's here this evening. And then I'm going to go through an overview of uh, the work that we've produced recently for the general plan. Um, and we're going to be talking about goals, policies, and actions tonight. I'll explain more about what those are. And we're going to break this up into chunks. So first, we're going to talk about the pieces of the general plan that cover public services and facilities, safety, and noise. And then after I present that material, we're going to pause for just a few minutes of any clarifying questions. And then some polling, interactive polling, to hear from you about what's important to you among these topics. And then we're gonna repeat that process twice more with a presentation about community design and historic resources, and then conservation, open space and recreation. And then again, pause for questions and some interactive polling to hear back from you. And then finally, uh, we will tackle circulation or transportation and land use. And then questions and answers and polling. And then around 7.30, we'll have a more extended period for questions and answers to cover maybe some bigger picture, more substantive questions that might've come up for you um, during the presentation. Um, and we're shooting to uh, wrap up and adjourn uh, around eight. Um, and then if we have a, a strong demand and there's a lot of unanswered questions, uh, we can stay a little bit longer for, for anybody who wants to or needs to. Um, so while I'm giving the presentation, please be um, keeping your questions in mind and you can be submitting questions um, in the chat, uh, even while uh, the presentation is going on. And then we'll have brief pauses to kind of tackle a few of those at a time and then do the more in-depth session uh, after we've gotten all the way through the presentation. And one reason for this is that, as you can probably tell, even from this initial list of topics, all of the different um, pieces of the general plan are very closely related um, and so if you don't hear about a topic um, that you want to in one of the sections, uh, we might actually get to it in one of the later sections. So um, with that, <clears throat> as I said, we're gonna be starting off with um, kind of an icebreaker exercise to hear a little bit more about you um, and your experience with uh, the general plan process. So you should be seeing um, pop up on your screen now, uh, three quick questions that we wanna hear about. Uh, asking you uh, whether or not this is your first general plan event, or maybe you're kind of a veteran of the general plan update. Um, asking you a little bit about your interest in San Mateo. Maybe you live here, maybe you own a business here. Um, and then uh, finding out a little bit more about um, what, um, <clears throat> we're gonna have a third question about uh, where, where you live. Um, and you can fill that in yourself to talk about what neighborhood. Um, or what part of San Mateo you live in. So this, this polling information, obviously this is not a scientific poll, um, but it just helps us get a little bit of a sense of who we're reaching through the general plan update process and who, who is um, engaging. Uh, and it also helps us understand who we're not reaching and who we might need to do a better job um, of communicating with. So your answers here are really helpful uh, for us and, and I hope it's interesting to you as well to um, get a sense of uh, who else is 
who else is here with us tonight? So we'll give um, just a couple more seconds for folks to respond. And, you know, of course, this is voluntary. And again, it's not um, scientific, uh, but just kind of a good benchmark for us to have a sense of our audience. So, so far, um, out of the folks who have responded, um, about two thirds are here for their first general plan event. And that's really exciting. Um, the city has been doing a lot of outreach in September and that's gonna continue. So um, I hope that's a sign that we're reaching some new folks uh, who haven't been part of the general plan before. And there's also about a third of you who have come to other general plan events and that's awesome. Um, uh, we appreciate that and we definitely appreciate your continued involvement. Uh, we've got a lot about a little bit over half of the folks who have answered so far are residents. Um, some people are renters, some people own property here, um, and some of you also represent a, a neighborhood or a community group. Um, so that's that's great. And I think um, Ricky is also going to show us the um, answers to the question, the open-ended questions about um, what what neighborhood folks are in. Great. Thank you, Ricky. So North Central, Brisbane, Bearsford, folks from as far as San Francisco, Shoreview, um, Burrell, Parkside. So this is great. Um, thank you very much. Again, just wanting a little bit of a flavor of, of who is here. So with that, I think we'll um, start sharing. I'm sorry, stop sharing. And I will dive into the presentation. Let me open my, share my screen. <clears throat> so um, just to start out with explaining what we're hoping to accomplish today, we wanna um, just give you the chance to participate in an inclusive and informed dialogue about the goals and policies that are going to guide San Mateo's growth and decision-making for the next 20 years. That's what the general plan will do. That's what we're talking about tonight. Um, and I hope that this will help instill in you a shared sense of possibility for the future. We're very much interested in any initial feedback you have on the draft goals and policies that we're talking about. Uh, and I also wanna make sure that we're very clear that this is just one step in a much larger and longer process. I'm gonna talk about where we are in the process. And I know some of you are here for the first time and um, that's awesome. We can still um, get a lot from your involvement and we really appreciate it. So we did these questions already. Um, again, we're gonna have three different opportunities for you to submit questions or for us to answer your questions uh, as we go through this presentation. So as I'm talking, if a question comes up for you, if something's not clear, um, please go ahead and use the chat function to send your question. Carrie from Placeworks is gonna be helping moderate the questions and Zach um, from the city will be answering those questions as we take several breaks um, during the presentation. But you can submit them via chat at any time. So let's start off by talking about what is the general plan um, itself. The general plan uh, is a very powerful and important document. It guides growth and development, as I said, and it has a 20-year um, time horizon. So um, it starts out with big picture guidance for the physical growth and development of San Mateo for things like um, land use and transportation and urban design and open space preservation. It's guided by um, the, the vision and values that we'll talk about in just a second. And this is the foundational document that then um, sets the uh, parameters for further planning and detail that's implemented through things like specific plans, neighborhood plans, um, and the zoning code. So the general plan really drives um, is the first layer of deciding what kind of is and isn't possible in San Mateo. The general plan is guided by a vision statement that was developed with extensive community um, involvement. And it says that San Mateo will be a vibrant, livable, diverse, and healthy community that respects the quality of its neighborhoods, fosters a flourishing economy, is committed to equity, and is a leader in environmental sustainability. And that vision statement is supported by five values of diversity, balance, inclusivity, prosperity, and resiliency. So those are the kind of themes that our general plan is really um, gonna be expressing as we start to dive into the details of physical development. 
Uh, this has been uh, underway for a couple of years already. Uh, and we have developed the vision statement you saw. We've collected a lot of existing conditions data to build off of. And we went through an extensive process of land use and circulation alternatives that some of you might have been part of. Uh, and that has gotten us to where we are now in the middle of uh, 2022. We are um, reviewing draft goals, policies, and actions. And again, I'll talk more about what those are as we go on. Uh, and that's setting us up to publish the draft general plan and an accompanying environmental impact report or EIR uh, in 2023. And we're aiming to have this plan wrapped up and put before the city council for adoption um, by the end of 2023. Just a quick note, you can see on this the slide, the green bar representing the housing element. That housing element is legally a part of the general plan, but because it has very specific state requirements for um, state review and for adoption deadlines, it is proceeding on a, on a separate and parallel track from the rest of the general plan update Adoption for the housing element is scheduled for January of 2023. So I just talked about the housing element. The pieces of the general plan um, in state law are referred to as elements, but you might think of them as like chapters in a book. And the, the chapters or elements that contain policy guidance are the ones listed here on this slide. So they include land use, circulation, which is another word for, for transportation or how we move around, Housing, which as I mentioned, is being prepared separately. Community design and historic preservation. Conservation, open space, parks and recreation, public services and facilities, safety and noise. So that gives you a kind of a start of a sense of what topics the general plan touches on. It's very broad. Of course, in addition to providing this important regulatory guidance, the general plan also needs to have a couple of other pieces just to help us understand how to use it. Um, so it's also going to have an introduction that explains how it was developed and adopted and how it might be amended in, in future years, um, technical appendices that provide supporting data, glossary acknowledgments, and importantly, um, what we call an implementation plan. We're going to talk tonight about actions and the implementation plan really consolidates all of the actions in the general plan and starts to assign responsibility and timelines to create some accountability for the city in implementing the general plan after it's adopted. Oh my goodness, where did that happen? Oh, I see. Um, so the general plan is based on extensive community feedback. It really needs to express what San Mateo wants to be and it needs to be implemented, it needs strong support from the community. Um, so the voice of the community is extremely important in fine tuning the contents of the general plan. And community feedback um, has been a pretty consistent, uh, strong effort for us throughout the general plan update. We've, we've literally talked to thousands of San Mateo uh, residents and stakeholders throughout this process. And some of the themes that we've heard pretty consistently over the past couple of years include concerns about traffic congestion and especially traffic safety, um, <clears throat> a need for affordable housing uh, in San Mateo, transit and the need for transit improvements, as well as improvements to sidewalks and crosswalks and lighting to make walking and biking safer and more convenient in San Mateo. Uh, concerns about on-street parking, a desire to see San Mateo really continue and enhance its a tradition of community events, gathering places, activities, um, and beloved parks, a desire for improved safety and neighborhood beautification, concerns about historic resources and historic preservation, uh, and community design. And all of these things are things we're going to be talking about in a little bit more detail tonight. So we are not done talking with the community. We want to continue to hear from you, from your neighbors, um, and from everybody in the San Mateo community. Uh, right now, um, when we're focused on goals, policies, and actions, uh, and also topics related to environmental justice, uh, you can get involved in several different ways. We have an online survey at strivesanmateo.org. That's our website. It's at the bottom of every slide here. If you haven't checked that out yet, please do. There are many resources there about the project and about upcoming meetings. So strivesanmateo.org, you can take an online survey or maybe you wanna share a link with um, your friends and neighbors. 
Uh, Saturday, September 10th, we're going to be having a Spanish language open house at the King Center. That meeting is going to be conducted entirely in Spanish. If you or someone you know would enjoy participating in a meeting in Spanish, please um, join us uh, this Saturday at the King Center. And then we're also going to be having an open house next week. You can drop in, you can spend as long as you want, um, or just a short visit. Um, that's Saturday, September 17th at 10 a.m. at the main library. As I mentioned throughout September, um, the city's gonna be doing various pop-up events uh, all around town to continue to raise awareness of the general plan update and of these involvement um, opportunities. And then we're also gonna be going to the more formal public hearings of the planning commission and the city council. So right now we're scheduled to go to the planning commission on Tuesday, September 13th and Tuesday, September 27th. Those, that, those meetings are at city hall and then the city council meetings in October on the 3rd and the 17th. Again, you can always track our meetings, find more details, um, register for the meetings, have, download presentations like this one at strivesanmateo.org. <clears throat> so with that, let me start talking a little bit more about the draft goals, policies, and actions that we have developed and that we wanna share with the community this month. The, um, the goals, policies, and actions are really uh, the, the kind of, strongest piece of regulatory content in the general plan itself. So a goal is a description of a de general desired result, just like yourself, you might have goals for your personal life or for your budget or for your exercise. This is where you want to be. Um, and the general plan does exactly the same thing. We're thinking ahead about what we're trying to achieve and writing that down. And the goals are supported by both policies and actions. A policy is kind of like a rule. It guides or regulates act the activities in the city. Um, it is what staff and decision makers refer to when they have to make a decision about a project or a proposal um, and when they're deciding how to direct city staff efforts. Uh, an action is a measure or a procedure or something that someone, often city staff, but could be people um, at other organizations and agencies as well, that folks are going to do uh, to help to reach the specified goal. So policies might be things like prohibit a certain thing or require a certain thing. And actions are going to be something like amending the zoning code to allow something or to um, adopt a new kind of a plan to help provide development in a certain way. Um, but there's many other kinds of actions uh, as well. And we'll talk again, we can talk a little bit more specifically about what these look like in each element. We developed the draft goals, policies, and actions that we have so far, starting from the city's existing adopted general plan that's in place today, um, asking staff from all over the city to help us um, learn what's been working well, what needs to be changed, what's no longer relevant. Uh, we added new content based on new state law requirements. And then we also uh, made revisions and proposed new content based on what we've heard so far from the community and stakeholders, from the city's general plan subcommittee that's been meeting throughout this process, as well as from the planning commission and the city council. And that led us to um, the updated goals, policies and actions that we have now. There's another really important piece of um, the general plan that we haven't developed yet, uh, but I wanna make sure that we explain it tonight, which is the background information and the narrative that's gonna be part of each element. So we're not just gonna start off with a list of rules and a to-do list of actions for city staff. We wanna provide with each element a little bit of information and context about um, what's gonna influence these actions over the next 20 years and why we're doing what we're doing. Um, so that comes in in the background narrative. And when we talk about getting across the importance of a particular issue um, or how the city is um, intending to respond to community concerns, that really can help, um, that can be addressed through the background narrative that sets the context for the policies and actions. And that's not part of what um, we have drafted yet, but it's an important piece to be aware of for future steps. So in the rest of this presentation, I'm gonna be going through sets of goals, policies, and actions um, divided up into these chunks here. So we're gonna start off by talking about public services and facilities, safety, and noise. And then as I mentioned, I'm gonna pause. Uh, we're gonna answer a few questions and do a little bit of polling to hear your reactions to what we've talked about. And then we're gonna repeat that with community design and historic preservation and conservation, open space, parks, and recreation. 
another pause for questions and polling, and then finally finish up with circulation and land use, and then answer some more questions. And then at the end, um, around 7.30, again, we have a longer period um, for questions and answer to go into a little bit more depth. So um, these, these Q and A's that are kind of sprinkled throughout the presentation are intended to be relatively short and just kind of clarify anything that um, maybe you didn't quite understand as I was going through the presentation. If you have more substantive questions um, and stuff that's gonna take a little bit more of an in-depth response, uh, try to hold those until our longer period of Q and A at 7.30 if possible. And again, just feel free to be submitting your questions in the chat um, throughout the presentation, and we'll get to those during the breaks. So let's start off with our first set of goals, policies, and actions. Um, this is about public services and facilities element. So um, we're going to go in each one of these kind of goal by goal, starting with each goal in the element, and just giving you a sense of some of the topics that the policies and the actions address. Um, all of the goals, policies, and actions make up a document that's between 60 and 70 pages long. So we're not going to be talking about each one of them today. The entire document is available online at strivesanmateo.org um, if you want to go through it and if you haven't seen it yet. Um, so really, this presentation is just kind of going to give you a general sense of the types of topics that are covered. So our first goal in public services and facilities element is about community safety. And it's to protect the community's health, safety, and welfare by maintaining adequate police, fire, and life safety protection. So policies and actions under this goal cover things like police and fire services, including police stations and fire stations, inspections that the fire department does, um, emergency medical service, uh, and code enforcement. Each one of these slides, or many of these slides, will also see. You'll also see kind of a little blue box um, over on the one side of the slide. And uh, just to draw your attention to that, with almost everything that the city does, uh, it's done in collaboration with or communication with other agencies. So, as an example, um, when we talk about public safety in San Mateo, that includes coordination with the San Mateo County Department of emergency management and the San Mateo Consolidated Fire Department, which covers San Mateo, but also covers other districts. Um, and so just want you to be aware that uh, there are many times other types of agencies and other plans that are gonna be um, adding to the and influencing the way that the city enacts um, the general plan. I'm not planning to talk about each one of those blue boxes as we go through this, but. Uh, they're there to provide a little bit more um, information and acknowledge the important role of the many uh, partners that the city has. So water supply, also a very important topic that we've been um, thinking a lot about with the current drought. The goal is to support maintaining access to a safe, sustainable, and resilient supply of water for San Mateo. So policies and actions under this goal include um, supporting supplemental water sources, the importance of water conservation and water efficiency, potential use of recycled water, and other water reduction strategies. Uh, the wording of this goal kind of indicates something that I want to make clear, which is that the city is not its own water provider. Uh, the city has provided water through the Cal Water Mid-Peninsula District, um, and so the city doesn't necessarily have um, sole control over things like water reduction strategies in San Mateo. So a lot of these policies and actions are about uh, collaboration and cooperation with Cal Water. Sewer and storm drainage is another topic in this element, um, and we want to provide storm drainage, sewer, and flood control facilities to serve existing needs, projected population, and employment growth. So this is the place in the general plan where we talk about the city's sewer system and requirements for new development, um, how we can reduce sewer overflow, policies about the wastewater treatment plant, which is um, uh, the city's wastewater treatment plant and interagency coordination for other uh, agencies that also use the wastewater treatment plant, coordinating infrastructure improvements, how we alter um, or don't alter creeks, stormwater drainage, um, and stormwater pollution prevented, prevention, and an idea of dig once, meaning if we're going to be digging up the street to do any kind of work for sewer or storm drainage, that we coordinate other kinds of improvements at the same time to minimize disruption. 
Uh, fourth goal is to maintain and develop public facilities and ensure they're equity, equitably available to all current and future members of the community. So this includes things like use and access at City Hall, at the libraries, um, making sure that there's cultural and entertainment facilities to serve San Mateo residents, um, the courtyard, uh, and coordinating with the county events center. We have a goal about children, youth, and schools and fostering their healthy development for children of all abilities, incomes, and backgrounds. This is where we find policies and actions about um, schools, uh, school site reuse, child care needs, um, child care facilities and centers, um, and coordinating with uh, the school districts. We have a goal about health care and social services. We want to support access for all residents to health care facilities, social services, and other important community health amenities. That might include the county hospital, Mills Health Center, uh, different types of social services provided in San Mateo, um, policies to help address various types of vulnerabilities and vulnerable populations among people who live in San Mateo, and community health care facilities. And then finally, solid waste, very important, reducing the generation of solid waste and increasing uh, diversion of waste from landfills. This includes recycling and composting and also just generally reducing how much we throw away, uh, as well as the, the safety of solid waste collection in San Mateo. So speaking of safety, or the next element is the safety element, and this is really focused on um, the uh, potential for physical and environmental hazards in San Mateo and protecting life and property from those. We start out with a goal about emergency readiness and emergency operations to minimize potential uh, damage and to make sure that emergency preparedness and response is well prepared and well coordinated. So we talk about um, the location of critical facilities and the importance of evacuation and emergency planning. Uh, response times for emergency responders, how we're going to plan for disaster recovery and uh, educate residents, business owners and property owners about evacuation uh, and evacuation routes. Um, we also have regular, um, <clears throat> this goal continues, that's obviously very important. So we have regular updates to different emergency plans, mutual aid agreements, resilient power systems, um, community training, like the CERT program, for example, um, emergency notifications. All of these types of topics are addressed uh, in this first goal of the safety element. This is our first map in this presentation. The general plan is a very map intensive document. And so each one of the elements is supported by different types of maps and exhibits. Um, some of them show facilities like this one. Other might show um, areas where a hazard is present. We'll get to those in just a second. Um, and we can turn to those if there's specific questions about them. First hazard is geotechnical hazards. So that might be landslides, liquefaction, earthquakes, and seismic shaping, shaking. This is where we have policies and actions about um, geotechnical design and seismic upgrades and seismic stability, for example. Uh, we have some maps showing areas that are prone to landslides and liquefaction, uh, as well as earthquake shaking. Flood hazards are another um, topic addressed in the safety element. So we talk about development, regulating development within floodplains um, and maintaining flood risk mapping data so that we understand where this hazard is in San Mateo and how that might change over time. This is the current map of uh, potential flood hazards in San Mateo. And we also have a map of potential dam and levee failure. Sea level rise is a topic of concern, certainly over the next 20 years of when this general plan will be in effect. And we understand that this is something that San Mateo will really need to work on as part of a regional coordinated um, effort. So this is where we have policies and actions addressing sea level rise data and monitoring, planning ahead for sea level rise, as well as for rising groundwater that could be triggered by sea level rise using natural infrastructure as a way to mitigate this hazard. Um, One Shoreline is a, a regional body that's been formed to help tackle this. Um, and there's also gonna be city staff looking at these issues. 
This map shows um, where in San Mateo sea level rise is expected to be an issue over the uh, lifetime of the general plan under different um, scenarios. The uh, wildfire hazards, certainly in this season, is something that many of us think about in California and the Bay Area that's addressed in the general plan. We talk about wildland fire protection and what we call the wildland urban interface, where uh, homes and, and buildings uh, intermix with undeveloped land at the edge of town, fire risk mapping, the making sure that there's adequate infrastructure for firefighting, um, and that we're also managing land in a way to minimize fire risks that might include things like um, tree trimming, as well as the importance of fire safe education um, for San Mateo residents. We have a map of wildland fire, wildland fire hazard zones, mostly an issue um, up in the hills on the western part of town. Hazardous materials are addressed in the safety element, and this could include the use, transport, or disposal of hazardous materials. So this includes cooperating with the county, who really has a lot of programs um, to manage hazardous waste, where hazardous waste facilities are allowed to be located, um, and how they're managed and what the city does with contaminated sites um, to am ameliorate any hazardous materials contamination that might already exist. And then finally, safety is also uh, one of the places in the general plan where we talk about the city's energy supply um, of electricity. We talk about clean energy, building electrification, energy resilience, um, utility undergrounding, clean fuel infrastructure, and similar topics. And then finally, uh, in the noise element, um, we, the, we cover uh, noise sensitive land uses. So when we think about noise uh, at the general plan level in a 20 year kind of time scale and a citywide document, uh, it's really more about thinking about where new uses and future development should be located so that we're not putting a very noise sensitive use like say a, a daycare or a hospital right next to um, a very noisy spot and that we are thinking ahead about noise conditions and managing them appropriately. So we wanna minimize unnecessary, annoying, unnecessary, annoying or unhealthful noise. We talk about ways to mitigate noise impacts, um, including traffic noise, railroad noise, commercial noise um, and construction noise. So that's our first set of three elements. And that means it's time uh, to see if there's any questions um, that we can answer. So Carrie, what have we got so far? Um, we have one question and I just want to give a time check, Joanna. It's 7.08 p.m. Thank so you. the first question is, will there be an analysis of the fire and emergency services staffing needed to handle a major earthquake like the big one? Yes, that is um, that is a good question. Um, the general plan will definitely be evaluating um, service levels. Um, to respond to a variety of activities and incidents that could occur. Um, and we won't specifically be evaluating those peak loads in the general plan, but I know that's an activity that is um, ongoing um, with the city and we coordinate with our partners, including the Consolidated Fire District, our police department and other emergency services providers. Um, but we are looking at the range of services and our ability to respond to a variety of incidents, including an earthquake, wildfires, as well as, as more routine and regular activities. Thanks, Zach. Any other questions right now, Carrie? That's the only question. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Please um, keep those questions coming. Um, we're gonna now do um, another Zoom poll just to kind of get your reactions to what we've talked about so far. So, um, I, I kind of talked a lot about the different contents and goals in the public services and facilities element, the safety element, um, and some of the noise sources in San Mateo. So we're gonna give you a chance to give us a sense of how, how your levels of concern about these different topics and how you might uh, prioritize them. So you should see a question um, pop up on your screen. So this is kind of going over, back over some of the goals and uh, that I just uh, talked about in public services and facilities. So 
Um, we're kind of asking you a tough question. All of these things are important and they're all in the general plan. So this isn't deciding what's gonna be covered or not, but just getting a sense of kind of the community's um, priorities or concerns, wondering about your kind of top three goals that you're, you would prioritize in the public services and facilities element that might be police and fire, that might be water supply, storm drainage, um, overall public services and facilities, children and youth, healthcare, or solid waste. And then similarly, we have a question about the top three um, goals and objectives. Oh, did we repeat the public service question? I think we might have public service twice and not have safety. Sorry about that, folks. Um, so you can let us know what you think about public facilities and services, um, and also your concerns about noise. I see some noise issues already coming in. Um, looks like vehicle traffic is edging out Caltrain, uh, but construction noise is a significant concern as well. And when we think about um, public services and facilities, it looks like police and fire is probably um, getting the most responses right now, but water supply, uh, storm drainage and flood control is also really important as are um, children and youth. Healthcare is gaining as well. A lot of um, a lot of really important topics in these in these, especially in public facilities and services and safety. And I think you can probably already see the ways in which um, these topics are interrelated. And I think you'll see uh, even more of that as we go on. So really, pretty um, close and consistent responses here about um, public service and facilities concerns uh, for police fire and life safety protection, as well as water supply and storm control, uh, excuse me, storm water and flood control um, and healthcare. So that's great. That really helps us understand your concerns and priorities. Um, I think water supply is probably number one out of what we're seeing so far. Uh, and in terms of noise, construction has taken the lead. So construction as a, as a noise source is, a, is probably the top concern among folks who are responding but vehicle traffic um, and Caltrain are also definitely um, very strong. I think we can go ahead and close out with that first poll. We're going to um, uh, have a couple more opportunities like this. So as I go through the presentation on the next, um, uh, as I go through the presentation on the next couple of sections of elements, you can um, be thinking ahead about what your poll responses uh, might be. This is a quick overview here. Okay, thank you very much for taking a few minutes um, to do that. Let's dive back in and talk about the uh, remaining elements of the general plan. Um, first is community design and historic preservation. So in this element, we cover things like natural landscapes and the urban forest, starting with San Mateo's natural setting, topography, views, um, heritage trees, and tree planting. Then we cover some goals about historic resources and preserving historic and culturally important structures, assets, and districts. Um, that might be rehabilitation, alternatives to demolition, um, public education about historic resources, uh, mapping historic resources in San Mateo. We have goals and policies about the city image and maintaining an attractive urban fabric that reflects San Mateo's unique character. Um, so that includes things like thinking about gateways to the city, public right-of-way improvements. Um, then we go into urban design policies and actions for different types of uses, including residential uh, neighborhoods, where we think about building mass and scale and design for both single and multifamily residential, uh, mixed use and commercial areas. 
focusing on improving the visual character and livability of these types of places through objective design standards, um, pedestrian oriented design and orienting buildings to the street, among others. We also have kind of a growing set of area specific design policies for different individual neighborhoods and districts. And we're very much interested in further developing these through ongoing community input. Uh, those might include, you know, some of the neighborhoods that are on uh, the map that you see here. If you know or care about these neighborhoods, um, as well as others that come up through the process. The next element to talk about is conservation, open space, and parks and recreation. And the, this element starts off with a goal about environmental stewardship and protecting and enhancing the city's natural resource areas um, to benefit human and ecological health and resilience. So we talk about natural communities, um, development near wetlands, um, and managing Bird Island, among other topics. Access to nature is something that we've heard a lot about from the community through the general plan update process. So um, we wanna support that through equitable conservation of natural areas, providing interpretive opportunities at the shoreline and the lagoon and Sugarloaf Mountain, um, as well as the Bayfront nature area. We have a goal about water quality, creeks and riparian areas. So this is again, connected back to the um, goal about stormwater management uh, and creek alteration that we saw a couple of slides ago in the public services and facilities element, as well as the flooding topic from the safety element. Um, we wanna minimize water pollution in our creeks and uphold water quality standards because creeks have both habitat value and aesthetic um, values. There's guidance for new creek side developments, um, as well as ensuring that there's opportunities for groundwater recharge. The conservation open space parks and recreation element addresses air quality as a natural resource in San Mateo with a goal that all San Mateo residents have the ability to breathe safe, clean air. This is where we talk about things like air quality thresholds and health risk assessments, um, as well as odors and toxic air contaminants and impacts to air quality from construction and truck idling. We address hillsides with a specific devoted goal to minimize the impact of hillside development and preserve natural topography, as well as archeological resources and what are called tribal cultural resources. So this includes not only um, archeological resources, but also places, um, plants, areas, views, uh, and other things that might be culturally significant um, to Native American tribes. So, and that includes coordinating and consulting with local tribes um, and through pre-construction investigation and other means to make sure that we're um, honoring that piece of San Mateo's heritage. There are several parks and recreation goals, including providing a comprehensive system of park and recreation programs and facilities to support active and healthy lifestyles, community building, enrichment, and lifelong learning. Um, as well as uh, parks and recreation facilities for both children and youth uh, and aging adults. We want to provide equitable and convenient access to parks and recreational programs and facilities. Um, so we think about customer service, inclusion and accessibility, getting input from all our residents to hear from you what's needed in our park and rec facilities. We also want to provide the appropriate mix of parks and um, facilities to balance active and passive and formal and informal uses. This is where we talk about things like facility standards and acreage standards for how much um, park and recreation uh, land and facilities the city is going to need over the next 20 years. And then we also want to develop well-designed park and recreation facilities. So this is where we think about um, rehabilitation priorities, shared use, cost-effective maintenance and upgrades, sustainability practices, and San Mateo's parks. So um, as you can see, a very um, comprehensive and robust set of policies, not least of which is providing stable and act adequate operational and capital funding for the parks and recreation system. We know this is something very important to San Mateo residents, and we want it to be sustainable uh, over the long term. 
This element includes maps of waterways in San Mateo, public parks and recreation sites. Uh, we also did a little bit of an analysis to see what parts of San Mateo are within um, a quarter mile radius of the of parks and recreation facilities and those areas that are kind of not necessarily within one of those um, service radii at the moment. So where might um, facilities be needed in the future? We mapped scenic roadways and pedestrian trails um, as well as one of the conservation resources. So with that, we're gonna take another pause to see um, if, if there's any questions that we can answer right now. And please, again, go ahead and use the chat function to send any questions if you have them. All right, I have a couple questions. Um, with water conservation being extremely important, why are parks um, watered on a daily basis? Is reclaimed, is reclaimed water being used? That's a good question. And um, maintenance of our parks and recreational facilities is always balanced with um, ongoing awareness of ongoing issues and that it, and water conservation and responding to the drought that's um, affecting the state right now is definitely um, a key priority. And but that's balancing it with ensuring that we have safe and accessible recreational amenities. Um, we do have a number of goals and policies that focus on how we maintain it. And then those also would overlap with um, our goal and policies and actions relating to um, water usage and water conservation. And so often it's a balancing act. Some of those um, details would go beyond what's covered in the general plan, but the general plan would outline the framework of how we consider an issue like that um, when you do have competing demands, say for recreation, but then also ensuring that we're doing what we can to conserve water usage. I have one more question and it's related to safety. Um, the commenter said that their biggest concern are car break-ins and house burglaries. I'm wondering how the city can um, assist and prevent those issues. That's definitely something that um, is covered in a couple different areas, whether we're talking about quality of life for our residents, making sure our, our residents and our community members feel safe. Um, and then ensuring that um, we have appropriate and adequate um, police services to meet the needs of our communities and make sure that we are able to cover, respond, and, and limit these type of activities. Um, so this is something that the general plan will kind of set the parameters and framework um, for, um, for police services, overarching staffing metrics that we want to try to achieve. And then from there, city staff, the police department, and other partners would then work specifically to develop strategies for how we could address and, and respond to specific situations like that or occurrences. There was a comment um, requesting parks that have vegetable gardens and trees and no lawn, more of a natural environment. The second uh, question of how can we make specific comments on the maps showing the radius of the service areas of parks and recreation facilities? I think um, with regard to comments, there's a number of different different avenues. If you've got specific comments, one, um, our online survey does offer an opportunity to provide um, specific written responses. Um, we also have a Strive San Mateo um, email address that you can always email. You can find that on our strivesanmateo.org website, um, or you can reach out to um, myself or planning staff um, at City Hall, and we can we can work with you to make sure that information is collected. But yeah, we would definitely love to hear individual comments if you have them on, on specific aspects or maps within the general plan. Another question about how um, we, someone could view the neighborhood design policies. So we have, um, we started with a draft, but really the goal was we want to have these policies driven by communities, by neighborhoods. What are the priorities when it comes to community design um, for individual areas or neighborhoods around the city? And so um, a lot of those, we had the headings or we identified areas, but it's open. We want to hear from you. What are your priorities? Are there areas of town that have a specific consideration or attribute or something that we want to consider and respond to in the general plan? And so this is something that we'll be developing over the course of this outreach and engagement period. And then following um, input from council in October, we'll be 
folding that input in and incorporating it into the draft general plan that's published in the spring. But we're happy to chat further or receive your input if you have any specific thoughts or ideas. And Ricky, I know that you're going to be inserting a link to the online survey um, later as in the chat, but maybe we could go ahead and just do that now. Um, we'll put the link to the chat in, excuse me, the link to the online survey in the chat. So that online survey offers kind of step-by-step -step opportunities to give input on all of the elements that we've talked about tonight or just individual elements. Um, if you want to have more in-depth com comments, and it also provides a kind of an easy link to the complete text and maps of the goals, policies, and actions that we're presenting um, here. So anybody who wants to take a deeper dive, um, the, the link to the survey will give you the opportunity to do that. Any other questions right now, Carrie? Um, no questions. I do have one comment. Um, the commenter said, it's confusing for a newcomer like me because it appears the city manages some resources and services directly, whereas there are other city agencies that are independent, like emergency services. Yeah, that, that very is valid. A, it's a valid point. And it's a balancing act. I mean, we have the, the fire department, the San Mateo Consolidated is now a separate agency that serves um, entities beyond just the city, similar to our two water providers there outside the city. So um, with relationships like there, that there's ongoing um, engagement and activity and ensuring um, that we're, we're meeting mutual needs and coming up with strategies to address key issues such as um, water conservation when we have limited water supply. Yes, but um, don't feel bad. It, it is confusing, you know, and San Mateo Police is a city department, but fire is not, water is not, but storm water is, um, you know, schools are not, that's true in most city communities, I mean, city California communities. So um, yes, there is a complex web of different um, agencies that the city works with, and it does take some time to understand all the ins and outs. Oh, well, oh. Go ahead, Carrie. Okay, sure. Uh, I have a comment on community design. Um, it should be clear about enabling transitions between lower density and higher density areas. And then someone asked, um, will there be an opportunity to submit general comments? Yes, definitely. I mean, if, whether you're looking at um, this evening, there's always that opportunity or outside of this virtual workshop, there's um, uh, emailing the, um, general plan update team directly or providing comments within our online survey. Um, or if you want to speak to myself or a team member, you can always reach out to us and we can we can um, try to find a time to meet with you at City Hall if you would like as well. So we're we're willing, we want to make sure we can hear from you in any form that's most comfortable for you. And another question I'm asking, what is the deadline to submit comments? It, that's a good question. And this is an ongoing multi-year process. So overall, we, we have a, a target to have a final general plan that's ready for adoption by the end of 2023. So up until that point, we are accepting comments. I think for this phase, which is focusing on our goals, policies, and actions, um, we're, I would say, probably end of September. But really through um, our second city council meeting in October, there's going to be that opportunity. But even after that, the everything that's going into the general plan is still draft. So there's continued opportunity to provide input and comments. And then we'll be con conducting additional community engagement next spring and summer when we have a draft general plan and there's still continued opportunity there. So um, there's a lot of different points along the way starting now um, over the next year and a half. Let me keep going with the presentation because I see some hands starting to pop up. So I want to wrap up my Part. You can be done listening to me and um, we can give you guys a chance to uh, ask additional questions um, and unmute yourselves and, and ask your questions verbally if you want to. You can definitely still um, keep using the chat. Before we dive back into the very third and final part of the presentation, we want to do another one of our um, Zoom polls. So we're going to pop up some questions for you asking about your priorities related to the goals in the community design and historic preservation element and the goals in the conservation, open space and recreation element. And then after we have a chance to hear from you uh, with your reactions to these poll questions, 
Um, then we'll return to the presentation and quickly cover circulation and land use uh, so that we can open it up for, for a little bit of a larger forum. So just as a reminder, the community design and historic preservation element includes goals about San Mateo's natural setting, protecting heritage trees and street trees, preserving historic and culturally important structures and assets, developing, developing and maintaining an attractive community character, um, maintaining and enhancing the character of residential neighborhoods, and improving the visual character of mixed use and commercial neighborhoods. So kind of a variety of different goals and priorities related to um, community design and historic preservation. And then looking at the conservation, open space and recreation element, uh, our goals and included things like protecting and enhancing the city's natural resources, uh, protecting and improving San Mateo's creeks, ensuring that all San Mateo residents breathe safe, clean air, minimizing the impacts of hillside development, protecting archeological resources and tribal cultural resources, and um, providing a comprehensive set system of parks and recreation facilities and, and services for the city. So as the responses keep coming in right now, uh, looks like the top priority for folks who are responding is maintaining and enhancing the character of residential neighborhoods, followed by uh, protecting heritage trees and street trees and improving the visual character of mixed use and commercial areas. And when we think about conservation and open space resources, uh, breathing safe, clean air is the top priority for most people along with protecting and enhancing natural resources, but protecting and, um, and improving creeks and providing a comprehensive system and parks and recreation programs is are, are also uh, very high on the list. Let's wait for a few more responses to come in and see where we end up before we keep moving on. So heritage trees, residential neighborhoods, and mixed use and commercial neighborhoods are top priorities in com community design. Um, protecting and enhancing natural resources and breathing safe, clean air are our top priorities in conservation and open space and recreation element. That's excellent. Thank you very much for taking a few minutes to let us know your feelings on those. We're gonna um, just share the results for a second, let you glance at those and then get right back into it. All right, so let's keep going with um, our last two elements, the circulation element and the land use element. So circulation, as I mentioned, really is a fancy planning word that we use in the general plan world for just transportation, getting around, moving around. Uh, goal number one is about multimodal transportation. And as planners, when we talk about modes, that means different ways of getting around, riding a bike, walking, driving in a car, taking a bus, each one of those, it's its own mode. And so multimodal transportation means the ability to use or choose among different ways of getting around. Um, so this is about a transportation system that is sustainable, safe, and accessible for all users. So it includes things like um, pedestrian and bicycle mobility, transient, transit oriented development that's gonna support use of Caltrain and buses, um, safe routes for seniors, safety education. Transportation demand management is the second goal. And this really means um, creating opportunities and incentives that help people be able to make a choice uh, to not have to drive or certainly to not have to drive alone in what we call a single occupancy vehicle trip. Um, so this is about TDM requirements for new developments um, or for businesses in San Mateo, as well as ways of um, being able to travel to schools, maybe providing shuttles as part of new development. We have a goal devoted just to um, pedestrians and build, building and maintaining a safe, connected, and equitable pedestrian network, um, including improvements to the right-of-way, utility undergrounding, pedestrian and trails, 
um, and safe routes to school and the downtown pedestrian mall. We have a goal that's just about bicycles uh, and micro mobility. So that might be things like um, little scooters that you can get around on, um, building a safe and connected and equitable network through implementing the city's bicycle master plan, thinking about what we call first and last mile connections to and from transit or other destinations, connectivity across 101 and 92, um, new technologies emerging to support bicycle use. The circulation element will include a map of both the existing and the planned uh, future bikeway network in San Mateo. The general plan also addresses transit and mobility of services. Again, this is an example where the city does not own or run or operate the buses in San Mateo. So we've got to coordinate with um, other agencies um, to make transit a viable transportation option. So this addresses Caltrain, high-speed rail, um, transit access and new developments, and again, um, possible shuttle services. We have a map of transit routes in San Mateo. Of course, we are still gonna be having cars and getting around in cars for this foreseeable future. So the general plan also needs to think about roadway improvements um, and improving our roadways um, in a way that is efficient and reduces the miles that people um, have to drive to and from San Mateo. So this is where we look at neighborhood traffic, truck routes, traffic signals, um, and prioritization and timing of roadway improvements among other topics. There is a street classification map saying kind of the hierarchy of roadways in San Mateo. We heard um, early on in the presentation that parking has been a con persistent concern in San Mateo in the past. There's a goal, policies and actions to address parking management and to maximize utilization of parking as a public asset. It includes not only vehicle parking, but also bicycle parking and curbside management for things like deliveries and ride share, as well as truck loading zones. And then of course, you know, we're always thinking ahead for something like a 20 year document in the general plan, future mobility and technology, um, thinking about emerging technologies, uh, making sure that as we add mobility options in San Mateo, we do so in a way that is equitable through strategic partnerships and pilots and future ready, future ready infrastructure. And then finally, the land use element of the general plan addresses balanced, orderly and equitable growth and preservation that provides ample housing and job opportunities and maximizes the efficient use of infrastructure while limiting adverse impacts to the environment and improving social, economic and health equity. The land use map of the general plan is a very important piece um, of the document, something that um, we worked really hard on through a multi-year process of land use alternatives. Uh, and this just kind of gives you a sense of um, what the map looks like overall. Outside of the study areas that are um, outlined in black here, there really have not been significant changes to the land use map. Uh, we also want to um, balance well-designed development with thoughtful preservation. So this is where we have policies and actions about density, heights, community benefits, um, and the like. We want to support a range of different land uses in San Mateo to provide housing diversity, commercial diversity, making sure we have a full range of things like hotels and offices and the different kinds of services that we all need day to day, as well as gathering places and public facilities. Then the land use element gets into some specific focused planning areas. So there's a goal specifically about downtown and maintaining downtown as the economic, cultural, and social center of the community. A goal about El Camino Real to strengthen its role as both a local and a regional corridor. A goal focused on the Hillsdale station area and continuing to promote transit oriented development around the Hillsdale station. And another goal that focuses on shopping centers um, that are in transition. Uh, this has been a big topic for us in the general plan update. So supporting the transition of some shopping centers that might be experiencing high rates of vacancy um, into vibrant districts with a range of housing, shopping services and jobs that might apply in places like Bridgepoint, um, Shoreview and Belmateo shopping centers. 
I want to take a moment here and talk about a new topic that's in the general plan this year in response to new state requirement. It's called environmental justice. Environmental justice um, is the idea that uh, some places in California, throughout our country, but especially in California, um, have experienced in the based on past planning practices and historic social and economic patterns. Um, today, these neighborhoods experience a combination of both a higher than usual pollution burden and exposure to different types of air or water or soil contamination, uh, as well as socioeconomic disadvantages like poverty or low educational attainment. When we see both of those negative outcomes um, happening and overlapping in the same neighborhood, um, that's an area that state law says we need to give particular attention to in the general plan to address those issues uh, and improve the conditions in those neighborhoods. In San Mateo, we're calling those neighborhoods equity priority community. State law calls them disadvantaged communities. Um, and this map shows an, a clip from a statewide tool that looks at many different indicators to help identify where these types of conditions might exist uh, in every census tract in California. And this is the map for um, San Mateo. So you can see here that kind of the darkest area here representing North Central uh, is really the area with the highest or worst score um, and is an equity priority community in San Mateo. So we wanna think about environmental justice for everyone in San Mateo, but especially for um, folks who are living with the highest rates of um, both pollution and negative socioeconomic outcomes. So the state law, which is SB 1000, uh, requires the general plan to look at pollution exposure and air quality, access to public facilities and healthy food and safe and sanitary homes and opportunities for physical activity uh, in equity priority communities. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're doing um, uh, very specific efforts to engage the community in public decision-making and to prioritize improvements and programs in EJ or the environmental justice um, communities. <laughs> hmm. So the land use element includes a specific goal about environmental justice and supporting the equitable health and well-being of all neighborhoods in San Mateo by improving um, conditions in equity priority communities. So that includes addressing health disparities, um, improving access to parks and recreation, making streetscape and safety improvements. Uh, and some of these activities might be guided by a future plan that's specifically focused on the North Central neighborhood. Again, community engagement, very important um, to San Mateo governance. So we wanna include everyone in decisions for a shared and sustainable future and make sure that we're really reaching out um, through trusted partners and equity engage, uh, equitable engagement, community surveys and other strategies. The land use element is also where we have goals about uh, climate change and sustainability and making San Mateo strong and resilient uh, to adapt to a changing climate. That includes sustainable buildings and then reducing our greenhouse gas emissions, increasing our use of renewable energy and making sure that our infrastructure is resilient. We also want a sustainable, thriving, diverse and inclusive economy. So we have policies and actions about economic development and local employment uh, and improving San Mateo's jobs to resident match. And then finally, there's a set of goals uh, in the land use element that deal with topics like the city's fiscal health, meaning how much money the city has coming in to provide needed services and improvements how the city goes about reviewing um, and considering new development, regional cooperation with some of the agencies that we've already talked about on important regional planning issues, and just the overall maintenance of the general plan to, to ensure that after the general plan is adopted, it remains a, a viable um, and responsive um, guiding document for years to come. So with that, we reached our final kind of Q&A period and we're gonna do, um, I think maybe what we'll do is go, because I know we have again, folks with their hands up, thank you for your patience. And I'm sure you've got other questions, Carrie, that have come in. So why don't we go ahead and do the Zoom poll and then we can kind of just consolidate um, all of the questions and answers for the remaining time. So um, with our last poll, no surprise, we're gonna ask you about your priorities among the goals in the circulation element and the land use element. 
so as a reminder, um, the circulation element, a lot of stuff in there, but it talks about um, a sustainable transportation system. It talks about reducing people driving alone in their cars, building a safe and connected pedestrian network and a safe and connected bicycle network, making mass transit a viable option, um, uh, designing a transportation system and a roadway system that can accommodate future growth, providing and managing parking, um, and encouraging emerging transportation technologies. And then in the land use element, that covers things like balanced, orderly, and equitable growth, encouraging a wide range of land uses, helping improve conditions and equity priority communities that I talked about, um, promoting a sustainable economy, reducing greenhouse gas emissions and planning ahead for climate change, increasing community participation in the city's planning processes, supporting a streamlined development review process, and collaborating with our neighboring cities and other regional agencies. So we are very interested to hear what among all of these goals are important to you. We've got some results coming in so far out of our circulation goals. It looks like the top choice is building and maintaining a safe, connected and equitable bicycle and micro mobility network, but people are also really focused on the overall um, building a sustainable transportation system. So closely, closely aligned there. When we look down at land use right now, the top response getter, ooh, it's changing fast here, um, tied with reducing greenhouse gas emissions and also encouraging a wide range of land uses. But folks are also very interested in helping to improve conditions in equity priority communities and increasing community participation in the planning process, which you're doing right now. So that's great. Let's share the results of the poll and give chance, folks a chance to look. So top choice out of circulation was fostering a sustainable transportation system, but also a lot of support for um, bikes and micromobility um, and mass transit. And then under land use, uh, number one was reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and number two was encouraging a wide range of land uses. So that's great. Thank you very much um, again for your sharing all of your thoughts with us um, tonight. This has been really helpful for us. Um, and with that, I think um, the presentation and the polling is done and we can, um, I do have a little bit more that I wanna say before we close tonight about our next steps. Um, but uh, for now, let's open it up to your um, questions and, and comments. Shawana, can we pause really quick to do the raffle? Oh yeah, thank you, Angela. Thanks. <laughs> raffle, we're not gonna make, make you wait till the end for the, um, for the raffle, let's do it. So we have six Starbucks and I'm gonna enter the names into a random online picker and draw the six winners. Great. So the six winners are Anne Walson, Co, Brian Shields, Jean. We have an iPad, Pat Hunter. Evelyn and Evelyn Sabanal. So if I said your name, please send me a chat with your email address. Thanks. All right, congratulations, lucky winners. And thank you again. That's just a really small token um, for us of our appreciation for you for sharing your um, time this evening. All right, Carrie, what questions do we have lined up? And then I do see um, Giovanni, Ken, and Brian with your hands up, I will get to you. All right, first one, how do senior safe routes differ from pedestrian walkways? So these, um, this concept really focuses on accessibility. So um, there are small differences. They're ensuring that um, we're identifying pathways that are higher likelihoods that connect key destinations. 
um, where, um, where seniors uh, um, might be traveling, and then focuses on um, low grades, ramps to um, transition, avoiding drops, um, steep steps, things like that. I don't know, Joanne, if there's there's any any other pieces that I'm missing there, but in general, it's just kind of facilitating that that safe pedestrian connection from A to B for identified paths and um, high travel areas for seniors. Yeah, I, I think that's right. I think you know part of what this is getting at is that what might be um, safe and convenient for seniors probably also makes it safe and convenient for those of us who are not seniors yet. Um, so there might be a lot of overlap in the general pedestrian environment, um, but there's also some specific considerations that we want to make sure we're giving to um, seniors and other folks with who might be uh, experiencing limited mobility, um, especially around certain types of destinations in San Mateo. Next question, what is equitable development? So this one, actually, Joanna, I, if, if you have uh, a good response for that one, because I know you're, you're well versed in this area. Yeah, sure. I'm happy to. It's a great question. Um, and I think it's the kind of question that's going to come up a lot as we um, move forward with implementing the general plan in response to uh, concerns that really maybe were not part of the planning dialogue kind of in past um, generations. So I think we've um, in the past made maybe choices about um, development without being fully aware of thinking about how uh, development might have different impacts on different parts of um, San Mateo's uh, population. And, and, and I should really speak here in generalities because um, most places in California are really grappling with this legacy right now. So I think right now there's an increased um, attention on, for example, um, what kinds of uses is a new project um, displacing? For example, is it um, displacing affordable housing? Is it displacing um, a market that might be um, used by a particular uh, group in San Mateo um, or in any other uh, community? And is there a way that we can think about what features we might want to see in new development to make sure that it's really um, responsive to the members of the community, whether that's um, childcare or gathering places um, or designing uh, ground floor uses to be really fully accessible by um, all members of the community. So there's many, many different ways in which development can be um, equitable or inequitable. Um, that might be economic, it might be in the way that it's designed, it might be in um, kind of who it uh, appeals to, who might feel welcome and who might feel excluded. Um, and it's not to say that every building has to be accessible to every single person um, on earth, uh, but that there is a way to think more broadly about um, who's at the table uh, and who benefits when we make decisions about future development in our communities. Does the draft general plan possibly include building heights and densities greater than allowed now by Measure Y? If so, would that require going to the voters before full approval? Yes, that's that's a great question, and that is that is probably one of the core questions that we're really having a broad community discussion about, which is heights and densities. We have Measure Y, and then the initiatives that um, preceded it, um, and any any final general plan that includes heights and densities that exceed the limits set by Measure Y would require um, a, an updated ballot measure and a vote by the people. And so really what we're looking at now is having that conversation. We do have in our draft land use map, some land uses with heights and densities in proximity to transit along our corridors downtown, our three Caltrain stations that do exceed major Y limits. And so we wanna have a community discussion about what is that appropriate height and density that works for the community that we can build consensus around, and then ultimately take to our direction from the city council on how we want to proceed and move forward. So this will be a discussion that we'll continue to have moving forward into next year as we draft our general plan and try to build consensus around an appropriate density and intensity in different areas around the city um, that the community can get behind. Carrie, let's do one more question from the chat if you have it, and then I'd like to go to some of these folks that have been waiting so patiently with their hand up. This is the last question I have. Oh, perfect. Are there any plans to address homelessness as part of the general plan? For example, preventing and assisting homeless people as well as cleaning up garbage. 
Yes, um, that's another excellent question and, and definitely a pressing issue that our community and communities around the state and the Bay Area are, are addressing as well. Our housing element includes a number of specific policies and programs that look at ways we can address this. Um, the County of San Mateo also um, has a number of programs and the city works and works to support those efforts. And then in other aspects around the general plan, we'll have pieces that address whether it's um, safe and clean streets, um, dressing solid waste and sanitation. So different aspects are addressed in different parts of the general plan, but the primary area that this would be addressed is within our housing element. And in many ways, we do work and support county efforts as they have more specific programs and funding that addresses homelessness specifically. Great. Thank you, Zach. Um, let's go to the folks with their hands up and I'm just gonna go in the order that I see you on my screen. So the first is Giovanni and then Ken. Giovanni, are you still with us? Can you unmute? Go ahead. Hey, can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you. Oh, wonderful. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to have this input. Um, it sounds like you guys really um, have thought it, uh, over all the different things to take into consideration. I, I heard lots of comments about uh, healthy equity, prosperity, uh, which is encouraging to hear. Um, I, I haven't heard one thing that's super important to me and that's about labor. Um, the Carpenters 17 represents thousands of construction workers living in the city of San Mateo and throughout San Mateo County. Um, the Northern California Carpenters believe that stronger language and labor commitments on the following policy areas would enhance San Mateo's general plan and its vision for its future. The city of San Mateo is responsible for building 7,000 new units of housing over the next eight years and 47,000 countywide. So growing and training the construction workforce should be a central consideration in the, city, the city's general plan. San Mateo construction workers account for less than 5% of all the city's workers. Proportionally, this is lower than the average for both the county of San Mateo and the Bay Area. Policies throughout the general plan already speak to economic development local employment, jobs to resident match, and first source hiring. They would be well served by adopting our proposals on prevailing wages, health care, and investment in apprenticeship programs for the city's construction workers. And the equity priority community you spoke of, um, the, the low education obtaining uh, members that fall into that category, that our apprenticeship program is a perfect match for, for people like that. With less than 5% of the city's workers employed in construction, growth in this sector would both increase local capacity for much needed residential construction while also fulfilling the general plan goal of diversifying the city's economic base. A commitment to local employment should not just mean creating office space for attracting professional service companies, but should include the very construction labor that builds the city. If the city hopes to produce more housing than was possible over the prior eight years and sustain this production into the coming decades, meaningful commitment and investments must be made through public policy to both bolster the current construction workforce and to training the next generation of construction workers. Um, thank you very much for letting me take the opportunity to address this important component of, of the, uh, the design and development. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments, Giovanni. Ken, go ahead. Okay, uh, a couple things. One, I'd just like to say that, you know, I, I tried to uh, comment on the survey polls, but the polls didn't show up for a couple of the times on my iPad. Don't know why, it's a mystery. But uh, I did send uh, comments to the chat. Thank you. Uh, and also I'm a member of the Sierra Club uh, Sustainable Land Use uh, Committee. And we sent a letter in with more detailed comments on the goals, policies and actions, you know, just we sent it earlier this week that you all take a close look at that and consider it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ken. And thanks for the, to the Sierra Club comment letter. We do have that and we certainly take a close look. Uh, okay, Brian Shields and then Kristen. Hello, good evening. My name is Brian Shields. I'm a field representative from Carpenters Local 217. Uh, part of the NorCal Carpenters Union. I just wanted to say thank you very much for um, putting this time in for the presentation. Uh, Joanna, you did wonderful. And, and Zachary, thank you for your support. Uh, why are, so 
rolling into it, why are there so few residential construction workers in San Mateo? As noted in the city's draft housing element, residential construction workers and their families do not earn enough to afford rent in San Mateo. To rent for a typical apartment, a household needs to earn $95,240 per year. Instead, residential developers and their contractors routinely import an out of area workforce. This perpetuates the cycle of undercuts that undercuts the wages of local of local workers, exploits workers recruited from afar, and allows for continued underinvestment in much needed apprenticeship programs that would benefit the community. Regarding the city's important focus on the effects of climate change, local hire policies also contribute to the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions by addressing the hours long commutes, sometimes forced on work on workers from their uh, from other areas of the state. Paying prevailing wage would allow more construction workers to live in the city in which they work in general, minimizing the commute times, which would add to traffic safety and keeping uh, income uh, within the community. Prevailing, wage, prevailing wages, support for viable apprenticeship programs, healthcare for construction workers and workable local hire are all critical elements to ensuring that a city of San Mateo has and will have in the future a workforce necessary to build the housing this community desperately needs, while achieving and even exceeding the policy goals outlined in the Strive 2040 General Plan. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Brian. Okay, let's go ahead and move along. We have Kirsten or Kristen. Hello there. Um, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to comment on these, this amazing work. Um, I just wanted to say, uh, my name is Kristen Hall. I'm a planner and urban designer, and I'm representing the Reimagined Hillsdale project team and ownership. And I believe Kohar Kojayan is also on the call. Um, and we just wanted to say we're really supportive of these GOPAs and think they're gonna create a wonderful framework for San Mateo for the next 10 years, as well as the Hillsdale Shopping Center as we think about redeveloping and the next phase. Um, and we wanted to particularly emphasize our support for the sustainable development principles, including the higher density near transit and the more progressive parking policies, and also the commitment to San Mateo's climate action plan. And we'll be providing a letter with more specific comments. Um, but generally our comments are based on a, a belief in and a support for um, the, the following planning ideas, which are that um, San Mateo should di diversify the majority single family housing stock uh, with the addition of high quality multifamily buildings that create great places for San, Mate San Mateans of all ages to live. Um, we also think that where commercial office growth happens in San Mateo, it should be prioritized at transit hubs and along El Camino Real and just have a clear emphasis on that in the, in the GOPAs. Um, we also think there are certain types of uses that are really desirable to support livable neighborhoods, but will need some certain incentives for feasibility. And those are things like support services, neighborhood commercial uses, childcare. And I believe childcare was in the uh, uh, support incentives for childcare was in the, um, it is already in the um, general plan, but it, I didn't see it in this version. So I don't know if that fell out. Um, also, um, we think that the goals and policies and actions around mobility actually don't go far enough in promoting a really safe, comfortable, and convenient walking and biking network. And we think that in all the mobility decisions and for all the streets, especially El Camino Real and within a half mile of transit stations, that the creation of a really safe, comfortable, and convenient walking and biking experience should be prioritized over the convenience of private vehicles. Um, and so that, you know, we have some suggestions for places where that could be kind of enhanced throughout the GOPAs. Um, as I said, we'll be providing a letter with more specific recommendations. And thank you so much. Thank you, Kristen. And it looks like um, Nancy, you have your hand raised. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm with the NAACP Housing. Uh, group and we've been auditing some of the 
um, proposals out there for housing. And the two areas of major concern right now is uh, the amount of housing, as one of the previous uh, speakers spoke about, for um, hardworking people in our area, and they're being um, forced out of the area, people of all economic and racial diversities. So we're very concerned about housing that does not include a higher percentage of BMR rate um, going above and beyond what is expected of cities to do it, to keep our people in the communities in which they have been raised. So both that and uh, refuting and please uh, do not consider separate buildings of only BMR. Um, we want uh, residents to be within the community spread not all in one building as some, some cities are doing which is really, really redlining neighborhoods. So we encourage you to, when you do get to your housing element, to please uh, raise the BMR rates that you're requiring developers to do and make sure that all of the BMRs are um, spread within the development and not segregated as a redlining commitment. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Um, well, before we um, wrap up, again, like I said, I want to make sure that I uh, take a minute and let all of you know about um, our next steps and remind you about some of the upcoming engagement opportunities that I mentioned early on in the presentation. So let me share my screen one more time and um, make sure that we go over those. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, Saturday, we're going to have a Spanish language workshop. Again, please let your uh, neighbors and other um, San Mateo residents know about this. It's happening at 10 a.m. at the King Center. It's going to be an open house. So folks can drop in um, actually any time between 10 and 12. I heard that there's going to be some Zumba and also another raffle. So if you didn't win tonight, you still have another chance at our Spanish language workshop. And then again, on the following Saturday, the 17th, we're gonna be doing an in-person open house at the main library. This one will be in English. Um, and again, 10 to 12, so it's an open house. We wanna make this as convenient as possible for folks to drop by. You're welcome to be there for the whole time, but you can um, come and go as you please. And we're gonna have different um, stations set up so you can learn more about the different elements and provide comments or get your questions answered. I mentioned that we have an online survey available. Um, Ricky already put a link to that in the chat. If you have more input you'd like to offer on one or many of the elements we talked about tonight, you can do that through this survey. Um, and we'd love it if you help us um, spread that link as widely as possible. Um, we've got a lot of responses so far, but we'd love to have even more. Um, and anyone can take the survey at strivesanmateo.org. That'll be live until September 18th, so another 10 days to take the survey. And then please do keep an eye out um, for the city. Zach, you want to say maybe a couple of the places you guys are going to be at over the next um, couple of weeks? Oh, yes, absolutely. We're, um, we're really trying to go where you are. We want to um, hear from you. Um, as you go about your business and when we have a chance to engage with you, we are um, going to have a presence at our three um, September nights on B Street events. Um, we are um, tabling and walking around, um, passing out information at our, our Friday night movies in the park. Um, we also have pop up events um, at a number of local grocery store grocery stores in and around North Central. And um, then we are also offering um, for local groups that have monthly meetings and um, periodic meetings, um, reach out if and you have an interest in, in myself or someone else from our team coming and providing you with a presentation and talking through some of the issues that are important to you. So um, we, we want to try to reach you in any way we can. And um, so for this month of September, we're really trying to make sure our presence is felt in and around San Mateo. And so we get a chance to talk to you, hear your thoughts, and, and make sure that you're aware of what we're up to over the next year and a half with this general plan update. Awesome. Thank you, Zach. All right, one more time with the survey. It's at strivesanmateo.org. And if you want to, you can um, hold your phone up and snap a picture of this QR code right now. It'll take you right there. It's a survey that's focused on the goals, policies, and actions um, that we've talked about tonight. 
and that are going to continue to be in draft form um, even after we publish the draft general plan early next year. So what we're going to do next is uh, talk to the Planning Commission about the goals, policies, and actions over the course of their two September meetings on Tuesday the 13th and Tuesday the September 27th. Those are public meetings. Uh, your comments uh, are welcome. And then we're going we're tentatively planning to go to the City Council for their two meetings in October which are on Monday the 3rd and Monday the 17th. Again, public meetings at City Hall. After we complete that round of meetings um, and talk to them about what we've heard here tonight and what we hear through a, the ongoing outreach in September, we're gonna put all of that together into the draft general plan that'll be out on the streets um, sometime in the first quarter of 2023. And we're really excited about that. And then finally, a separate survey, if you um, feel so inclined, we would love to hear your feedback about the workshop tonight. Um, again, you can use this QR code. So this is just a quick survey about this event tonight. If it was useful to you, if there's things we could have done better, uh, we really wanna hear about that. Again, I'm very excited for so many of you that were new participants to the general plan update. We wanna keep bringing in those new voices. Um, and so we want to continually improve and we'd love to hear your thoughts on how we did and what we could do better next time. So if you have a couple minutes to share your thoughts with us on the workshop feedback survey, that's extremely valuable um, to us and we really uh, very much appreciate it. Um, so before we sign off, I just want to give um, one final opportunity for any questions in case there's anything else we didn't get to uh, tonight. But um, this is really optional. So um, uh, again, thanks so much for your time here tonight. We are very grateful um, you're making this document a stronger and a better and a more enduring plan. And we're very grateful for that. We couldn't do it without you. Any questions All right. for chat, Carrie? All right. Zach, you want to? Sing us off here. Well, thank you, Joanna, for the excellent presentation tonight. And just thank you for everyone joining us here tonight. We really appreciate your input. And this is the community's general plan. It's it's going to be made up of your input and prioritize what's most important to you. So um, we'd love to keep hearing from you and look forward to engaging with you further as, as we move down this path together. Have a great evening, everyone. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great evening.